I've always taken a view the best way to get rid of the N-word is for everybody to stop using it. Absolutely. I don't really believe in this reclaiming of a vile derogatory term and just using it all the time anyway. Well, there was a black comedian, Larry Wilmore, that used it at the uh, White House Correspondents' Dinner. Mm. And uh, he took issue with it. Mm. And I came out and said he was right. And I blasted him. I said, there was a time all of us used street language, N-word, I used racial words. Mm. And we said it's wrong. And we apologized mm. for it. You can't talk about Roseanne and then give Larry Wilmore a pass. So what, what do you, you make of the, the Roseanne Bar thing is extraordinary, isn't it? I think that the debate is good. I think that even the fact that we could have shown this debate in a family. But when you start in your private life, but you're a public person, to start tweeting, equating someone as regarded and respected as Valerie Jarrett, former advisor to President Obama, or anybody, mm -hmm. to an ape, to a monkey, it goes back to the old racial kind of antagonisms that we do not need. And that is why I felt she had to be held accountable. Yeah, absolutely right. What do you think about President Trump? Because there are a number of people who accuse him of being a racist. You know, I've known Donald Trump for 35 years. He has made some of the most bigoted racist statements. I'm very, very uh, concerned about. And I said that he called me after the election, said that we should meet. I said, I will only meet of other civil rights leaders and I can come. I'm not going to be a photo op. And uh, we couldn't agree to meet because I think he's very much used race in a very cynical way. Wow. I'm not convinced that Donald Trump himself is racist. If you can bring a Ted Nugent, who's blatantly racist, to the White House and not deal with people that have fought for racial equality, the fact that you're comfortable with racists mm. makes you racist. Some people you would not be comfortable around. Right. He has no problem being comfortable around them. What else can you conclude? Well, the sad thing, it seems to me, having been on air throughout the Obama years uh, in America, was that there was such hope when Obama became the first black president that somehow this would you know, be a ma massive step forward for America's ability to tackle what is still widespread racism. If anything, it had the opposite effect, I felt, that eight years of a black president, all it seemed to do was bring out more racism. And you could argue that now, Trump, uh, the, the, the Trump administration and all the fallout from all the inflammatory stuff that's been going on with it, that actually America appears to be more racist than it was you before can't Barack be Obama came President to power. Obama. I'm not blaming him. America no, no. I'm just saying. I'm, no, 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 no. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is his ascent to presidency seemed to draw out. Yeah, racists I, I, that were lurking I, in the underbelly of American society. I think, uh, what I discussed this last night in Oxford, I think what happened was the electing of Obama brought out a lot of hate. Mm. You have to expose a problem in order to solve it. Mm. And I thought it brought it out. Trayvon Martin, other things right. came out. I think that Donald Trump played on that backlash mm. mentality. Make America great. Let's go back to mm. the way we were. What do you mean make America great? Great win. Mm. What are you, when are you talking about? What are you referring to? Well, the problem with the Trump uh, administration is that he, we had a thing with him, for example, where he retweeted a, a very far right racist organization called Britain First. Here. Right. And he did three retweets of videos they'd posted of a supposed Islamist attacks, and they were unverified, in one case, completely uh, wrong. But even when he knew that they were a racist group, he still didn't take down the retweets. And my argument with Trump is he boxes himself into where he think, thinks his strength comes from never apologizing. And, you know, I've said to him, you know, if you just gave a little bit, when you're wrong, if you just went, I got that wrong. Maybe he doesn't think he was wrong. Well, eventually I got a sort of half apology out of him about he, it. He didn't but, say I'm but sorry. But it was more, though, it was more like, if you think I should apologize, then I apologize. It wasn't, I really regret doing that. He doesn't regret things or apologize. It's part of his DNA. Yeah, and, and I think that the opposite is true. You know, Mrs. Coretta Scott King, Dr. King's widow, was, uh, I was honored to have been uh, very close with her before uh, her passing, through her son, Martin III, who works with me. And she used to say to me, Al, things you have said, words you use are wrong, inflammatory. That's not what we do in the King's Prayer. And she says, and you've got to grow to understand you're stronger when you say, I shouldn't have said that I didn't mean that I apologize, I don't want to hurt, than for you to be skillful in defending what you really mm. don't mean. Mm. And I think you hit it on the head. The strong person is to grow beyond mm. any misinterpretation, even if that wasn't the intent. And I would argue with you whether it was his intent. Right. You've got to be strong enough to say, we case, need to grow. In that case, should Roseanne be forgiven? 
for I, apologizing for I her think tweet. that if you go to the courts today, you should forgive people that commit crimes, but they still have to pay for the crime right. they commit. It's going to be Forgiving her does not give her immunity from mm. the, the station being able to say, you can't represent yeah. us that way. Yeah. Are you optimistic for the future of America in the short term? I mean, do you think that actually America can come together, can be more united? Obviously, a lot of it has to come from Trump himself, but do you have optimism? I am very optimistic. I, I believe that at the end of the day, no matter how bad it gets, that right will overpower wrong. That's why I fight every day. I do not believe this is hopeless. I uh, think Martin Luther King said it best, that the darkest moment in the night is right before daybreak. Mm. Do you think that President Trump will be re-elected? Uh, I do not uh, think he will be, but I don't take that for granted. I think people have to organize. I didn't think he would be elected. <laughs>